Y'all, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean and I have to introduce you to a very special guest by the name of John C. Air Reinecker. Now this woman has been in the music industry for over a decade now, so obviously there's a lot of things we could talk about, but she currently sits as manager of entertainment relations at TuneCore. She's a well of knowledge about TuneCore. She's going to dig into some of the things that I can't really answer about TuneCore, but of course she knows quite a bit. It's gonna be extremely helpful. There's a slight issue with the audio in my mic for whatever reason that wasn't detected till afterwards, but you hear her audio clean and clear, which is more important in this particular case. So enjoy. John Sierra, let's start here. How did you first get into the music industry? Yeah, so I started off with ASCAP in the New York office. Okay. I was actually a receptionist for their membership department. And so I would say about three years in, I felt like I mastered it. Okay. Like I knew how to answer phones and I was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was like, you know, I really wanted to work under the urban department at ASCAP. And so okay. I just put my bid in with my senior manager at the time. And one day she just came out of her office and she just started asking all these random questions. Mm. Like, hey, do you know how to drive? I'm like, yeah, I know how to drive. <laughs> and so finally, she just pulled me in her office and she said, the reason why I'm asking you all these questions is, is because we have this position open in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We really think you would be a great fit for it. And we want to send you there to work under our rhythm and soul department out there. And she was like, what do you think? I'm like, yeah, I moved to Atlanta. So, <laughs> and so that's really what happened. And so I moved out here to Atlanta. And then I just started off with their urban department out here, mm -hmm. working as a membership representative. And then about two to three years into that, I got promoted to associate director and ended on that title and then transitioned to TuneCore in 2016. Got it. Now, <laughs> you know, you have ASCAP, BMI, a lot of these important organizations within music. Can you define what ASCAP is for a lot of the young artists out there? Yeah, so ASCAP is a performance rights organization. And so basically they collect your public performance royalties. Mm -hmm. So royalties that are earned when your song is publicly performed. So whether it's on radio, television, via recorded concerts or on program music services, that's what they specialize in. Okay. So I saw somewhere that, you know, you did discovering of artists while you were there. Mm -hmm. Is that what was that like? Were you an A and R? Like I don't understand how that works within yeah. the ASCAP. I didn't understand. I didn't know they had discovering artists as yeah. a part of what they do. So it's not titled as A and R. Like okay. it's not a specific A and R role, but you have A and R functions. Okay. So you kind of function in that capacity. So definitely for me, um, as associate director, I was responsible for discovering gospel talent, mm -hmm. new songwriters, uh, publishers, etc., um, mm -hmm. and getting them signed up with ASCAP. So yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there anybody really interesting? <laughs> that you remember an artist a favorite of yours Casey J is one person that comes to mind amazing gospel recording artist uh, we also had other talent that was registered uh, with us such as uh, Mary Mary nice. uh, who else Ooh, slipping my mind. Uh, Mary Mary, oh my gosh, Andre Crouch, who unfortunately passed oh, away. Yeah. Um, so they have some major, major talent with ASCAP, gospel talent and other talent across the board as well. Okay, before I get into the tune core portion of things and what you're doing right now, before you were even at ASCAP, did you know you wanted to be in the music industry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. Okay. So I grew up in the Bronx, okay. so where it all started, right, hip-hop right, right. all started, right? <laughs> so growing up, I used to listen to Funkmaster Flex on Hot 97. I was a huge Flex fan, still am. And I used to uh, record his sets. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I just always like had a box full of like tapes of recordings of his sets. And I ended up falling in love with hip hop because of that. Um, I remember I was at uh, Rye Beach Playland with my family one year, one summer, and I heard this uh, hip hop song and I didn't know what it was, but I just fell in love with it. So that kind of led me into listening to Funkmaster Flex because I wanted to try to catch this song and record it and listen to it on the way to school and stuff. <laughs> and so I found out that it was Mob Deep Shook Ones. And so that made me fall in love with hip hop, fall in love with Funk Flex, DJing, radio, music, and that's, you know, kind of got my wheels turning to work yeah. in music. Okay. Did you go to college for it specifically? Or? No, funny enough, I went to college for creative writing. So I thought I was going to be a writer. 
um, which I do dabble in, but um, I realized that music was really the passion. So I love writing, but I love music just as much. Got it. All right. Well, <laughs> it's okay. We don't, you know, a lot of people don't use their degrees, right? Yeah. But, no, I use it. I yeah, use I'm it. Saying, I use it from like time might, to time. Use it a little bit more than I do, right? <laughs> I'm a computer information systems. Just oh, like, yeah. So yeah, you're not using that. Not really. Okay. <laughs> but, um, so, all right. Well, when I'm thinking about two important things that you do, I've seen quite a few things that you've done around town. I've been to quite a few of the events. I love them. Uh, thank, thank you for you. putting them on. Thank you. Um, I brought my sister to one, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, when we think about TuneCore, most people just understand that they're doing distribution, right? There are so many other facets of the company, but especially when it comes to what you do, can you describe your role here on the ground in Atlanta? Yeah. So manager of entertainment relations for TuneCore here in Atlanta. And so my job is to educate the music community here on TuneCore, what mm -hmm. our services are, things of that nature. Um, we also host career development programming in the market. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we have a series called Artist Consultations, which is designed to connect our artists with industry professionals yes. to learn more about the music business, how to navigate it and be successful. We also host JamCore, which is designed to give our artists a platform to perform and network. Um, and we host other events as well. And not just here in Atlanta, we mm -hmm. also host events in Austin, right. in Brooklyn, New Orleans, and Nashville. Right. So I know that you guys probably already sell out of this fast enough with the artist consultations but just to explain how valuable the artist consultations are to everybody like if you go these are true people within the music industry they, they have quite a bit of success varying levels but these people are literally just helping you out with your questions you're in a round table it's a pretty intimate setting it's not like being in a panel and you're in a big crowd like a music conference so like maybe seven people or we have five people? guest speakers at okay. a time five yep. guest speakers you'll be at a table with them almost like speed dating maybe five minutes yep. or something like that but you're only at the table with maybe four or five other people and you're talking to this person individually so it's pretty intimate and everybody's usually pretty open to connect and give you your con contact information I've met quite a few people um, that way just stopping by because I like to just meet people and see who's <laughs> the type of person to help educate other people because they're usually helpful to you, yeah. right? Um, so I want to thank you for putting those on. Thank those you. are just amazing. I can't believe they exist, honestly, the yeah. first time I, I started going um, to them. And if you're in Atlanta, I don't know how you follow up and find out about those. Yeah. Uh, is so that really, an open thing? Yeah, it, it okay. totally is. Um, we do have a mailing list for the Atlanta market. So okay. if you're looking to get added to that, just connecting with me is the simplest and, and uh, most effective way to do it. So happy to add anyone that wants to get added. Um, and we can keep you posted on those things. Okay. Um, do you have some kind of system because like, I, I don't it's gonna have, yeah, open up the floodgates yeah, so let's do my social media yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because my email is on my profile right, so right. It's gonna be a lot of people expect, I no i'm excited listen i want to <laughs> connect with as many people as possible okay. so yeah <laughs> um so my social right. media is just j reineker and i'm gonna spell that because my last name is crazy so j-r-i-e-n-e-c-k-e-r Awesome. So, and that's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll make sure we put all that at the bottom of the screen for everybody. Um, so, awesome. Okay. <laughs> With that being said, when it comes to TuneCore, what's one of the most, outside of just distribution, what's one of the most valuable offerings that you guys have that you feel like you wish more artists knew about? Absolutely. So there's two major services that we definitely want to highlight, our publishing administration service and then artist services. Okay. So going back to publishing administration, basically what that entails is that number one, we help artists to register their compositions with their respective PRO. So whether they're with ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, we'll register their compositions so they no longer have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also collect their publisher share from their PRO and we will collect other royalties that their PRO does not collect. So sometimes folks will say, well, hey, you know, I'm signed up with the PRO already. Is that enough? And the answer is really no, because you're only collecting public performance royalties from your PRO, but there's other royalties as well that you're entitled to. So you want to make sure that you're covered on both fronts. Can you break down the difference between <laughs> performance royalties yes. and mechanical? <laughs> yes. So performance royalties, again, they're earned when your song is publicly performed. Mm -hmm. 
mechanical royalties are earned when either your music has been purchased physically, downloaded digitally, or streamed on music platforms. And so that's what a uh, publisher administrator will collect, such as us. When you say publicly perform, are you saying on an American Idol, let's say, they yeah. perform my song and I get royalties for that? Is that what you're saying? So the mediums would be radio, okay. television, that also includes internet radio, recorded concerts and recorded concerts and on program music services so like music choice that's on cable television that will count as a program music service okay. so those are the mediums got you got you so and then also i wanted to go back to something i don't want to leave anything out so also with publishing administration, I wanted to note that we also have sync licensing as part of that service, mm -hmm. whereby we pitch compositions from, from our artists uh, for placement in film, TV, video games, and more. So that's also included. There is a one-time fee for that service, and artists can register unlimited compositions. Right. So that's publishing administration. And then also, I mentioned artist services, which simply put <clears throat> is a suite of tools that artists can use to really grow and manage their career. Got it. So, so we do a lot. <laughs> exactly. I know when I, when I first went to you guys' website and really did a deep dive, I mean, this is over a year ago now, I just hadn't realized how much you guys did. But, I mean, you know, you start with one thing as a company, you have to add on additional services to grow, and that's what we yeah. demand of companies. So I get it. Um, <laughs> well, when it comes to these programs like publishing or like the sync um, licensing and things like that, now, I hear about this as an artist, I want to get some sync deals, right? And I know that the checks, the sync deals could come better than sometimes just waiting for a lot of streams. But when I apply, my music might not necessarily be that great of quality. So do you guys have any sort of process? Do people get accepted or denied? from some of these programs that you guys offer? Great question. So it's important to note that we don't discriminate in terms of music genre or styles. So okay. it's definitely open to any artist who wants to register for that service. Hmm. So on the back end, is it more so you guys hold it in a data, in a, in a sort of database and you're more of a mediator, you allow this access to, let's say music supervisors and things like that. And it's just more so if it gets picked then you guys facilitate that? So it's twofold. So the compositions um, of our publishing administration clients, it does go into a music database for music supervisors to access, but also our sync team is directly working with music supervisors to place music, which is not always the case with every type of like uh, sync licensing agency. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's just database driven. So that's definitely something that's a plus with our service. Okay, interesting. So you have actual advocates of some sort of forms of music. Absolutely. Interesting, interesting. I, I know that takes a lot of work off the music supervisors. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had some like festivals and just events where I have artists apply and having to sift through music is, even if you love music. It's very tedious. <laughs> it's tedious. <laughs> when you're picking it not for leisure, but you're picking, you're, you know, you're picking it for a goal. It's a completely different context. Okay. Um, well, TuneCore, right? You guys have served a lot of artists. Is there any particular artist story that you're aware of that's used TuneCore that for whatever reason pulls at your heartstrings or you just love it, you you love to share that particular story in terms of the TuneCore mm -hmm. artist? So there's two artists that actually come to mind, Chance the Rapper and mm -hmm. Silent Toe. So Chance the Rapper distributed his Grammy Award winning album Coloring Book through right. TuneCore, awesome. which was the first streaming only album to win a Grammy. So that was pretty awesome. And then Silento, he had his uh, hit single Watch Me Whip, yeah, Nene yeah, distributed yeah, through TuneCore, yeah. and that led to award nominations and wins for him. So those are two really cool stories. Amma. Yeah. It's interesting that you guys do have a platform that, I mean, you could be at any level and everybody has access to basically the same services, generally speaking. How do you manage that as a company? Are there any ways that particular artists of certain caliber might get just additional services and management help? No, so it's not about us being like elitist or, mm -hmm. you know, that VIP treatment type of thing. So that's not what we're, that's not what we pride ourselves on. So if any artist at any level is interested in using our services, it's available to them for use. Got it. Okay. And I want to run back because you are somebody who happened to work at ASCAP. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between ASCAP and CSAC and BMI? 
So to be fair, I'm not going to get into <laughs> the difference okay. because here's the thing. Let's talk about the similarity. So they're okay. all performance rights organizations. So that's what they have in common. Uh, but to be fair, I don't want to go into, you know, what would kind of be the difference between the two because I've never worked at BMI, right, never right, worked right, at right. CSAC. So I can only speak to ASCAP. Okay. But there, but again, to be honest, it's something else that I, I personally feel is similar between the three of them. They all have amazing pros to joining. So what I always recommend is that artists do their due diligence to research each performance rights organization. And by the way, there is a separate one as well in the US, which is global music rights. So there are four performance rights organizations. Mm -hmm. So I definitely suggest to artists to look into all four of them to understand the ins and outs and just choosing the best performance rights organization for you. Okay. That makes sense. That's fair, right? <laughs> That's, that's fair enough. I, I understand. I get it. Um, well, how about this then? Um, the fact that TuneCore does these events like Jam, Jam Core and artist consultations, my question is why? Because from my standpoint, I think it's an amazing thing that they do it, but it's also with the observation that I've always said other technical music companies like Pro Tools, right? People who have dolls and just some other ones, they don't seem to be as involved, just to my knowledge, in the community. I feel like those companies should have music festivals and things like that that are culturally relevant. So maybe they do small events, I don't know, I don't have this knowledge. But from what I can see, you guys have some of these things that are really community outreach driven. What made you guys decide to do that? Yeah. So at our core, TuneCore exists to serve our artists. Okay. And so we provide access to artists at TuneCore, with TuneCore, at the local level to really nice. provide the education and support that they need to build their careers. Okay. But I mean, I'll add that it's not like you guys say, hey, you came to this event, you have to be a TuneCore member or anything yeah, like no, that. No, there's no pressure. We just, you know, more than anything, we want to provide the education, you mm -hmm. know, on what we do. And you make the best, you know, most informed decision for you. Okay. Now, doesn't mean require an artist to use any specific gen um, distribution service, but what do you see as the primary value of distribution, just generally speaking, then I have a slightly deep dive question into, into, into that afterwards. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. <laughs> so, I understand. What's the value of artists using those distri music distribution services when you have things like SoundClouds out there, right? You have YouTube, Spotify is starting to allow people to upload directly. Where do you see you guys are going to still remain relevant in, in the music distribution field? Got it. So the most amazing thing about our distribution model is that artists keep 100% of their revenue and 100% of our 100% of their rights. Right. And so that's something that, you know, artists that are signed up with us, it tends to be, you know, customer favorite there. Right, right. So that's definitely something that's important to note. And then also artists can distribute their music to over 150 digital music stores worldwide. Hmm. Now, are you familiar with Empire? Yes. So can you explain the difference of that type of distribution model versus you guys? So to be fair, again, I don't work for Empire. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I can't really, I don't want to mislead anyone in that information. Um, right, they right, right. definitely do offer distribution. Right. Um, but what I can say is that, again, you know, we offer, you know, 100% sales revenue to our artists. So we don't take right, out right, any right. commission on sales whatsoever. I mean, less from a technical standpoint, um, but more from a general services, because just from my knowledge, like you guys are a technical platform, right? But it seems some of the other distribution platforms, people who offer distribution, they have some label-like aspects. You know, I'm asking more from that general aspect, if you know what I mean. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so, of course, you know, we're not a label. So right. besides digital distribution, again, we provide publishing administration and artist services. Um, kind of going into artist services, which kind of, um, Again, like I said, it, it helps artists to grow and manage in their careers, and I think that's kind of what you're asking right, about. Right, right, right. Um, just some key highlights under that umbrella would be our YouTube sound recording revenue service, whereby mm. we collect revenue owed to artists for their music being used across the platform. Okay. We also have um, our Facebook and Instagram monetization, so we track on those um, major social platforms as well. So those are a couple of things that we, we offer under that umbrella. Okay. And I already value your time and I really appreciate it. So one last thing I would love 
Um, just from you personally, what value do you really see, if you could just really explain to artists the value of what you guys offer, just from the licensing, the distribution, though that aspect, and why it's so important for artists to professionalize their back end? Yeah. So we just want to, you know, drive home the importance of, of choosing the right distributor. And again, you know, TuneCore is really amazing because you're keeping more money in your pocket. In addition, we have other services as well that is going to help you to really build your career in this industry. And um, it just gives you the most bang for your buck, personally, I'd yeah. say, you know, so it's amazing. It's amazing <laughs> services. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate you once again, John Sierra. Uh, I will, as I said before, put all of her social information at the bottom of the video. Um, as you guys have seen, I've done before. Would love to have any comments that you guys have in the comment section below. Um, ask her questions. Possibly, I don't know if she will be able to or have the time. I know she. I will have the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have the time to answer all questions. All right, so. We will get those questions answered. I'll even send them over to her or she might be able to get into the comments. However that process is, you'll find out when that time comes. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.